New tonight, a fight during a high school football game in Pocosin. The York Pocosin Sheriff's Office tells us a 53-year-old man attacked a 15-year-old who was waving a Confederate flag. This happened tonight during the game between Pocosin High School and Tab High School. The man, Thomas Ozoroski, is charged with two counts of assault and battery. And that's because a girl sitting nearby was also assaulted and we're told she's okay and the game was not impacted. Tonight, new details about a complicated crime with scenes in three cities. It started with a home invasion early this morning in Hampton. Then a person was found shot to death in Newport News. Hours later in Baltimore, Maryland, a man and woman led police on a pursuit before they were arrested. Robert Boyd joins us with more on this investigation. Well, Janet, this case played out over multiple locations. Police are still investigating how it all unfolded while neighbors are shaking their heads wondering why. This when it happens right here in your neighborhood and it's right across the street, then I mean, it'll make you wake up, man, and like realize, man, life is important, man. You got to value it. Christopher Seymour is referring to the home invasion that took place at his neighbor's house on Hearst Drive in Hampton at 237 Friday morning. According to police, one man was stabbed multiple times while another man was assaulted while trying to help. Neighbors say an 84-year-old man and his great-grandson live inside the home. They say the grandfather is very nice and well-known. So he was probably the one that came to the rescue of his grandson and ended up getting hurt, unfortunately. According to police, at some point another man was shot in connection to the invasion. That person was found dead about 10 miles away on Rose Court in Newport News at 3.13 a.m. I'm at a loss for words, you know, it's, I don't know why people do those horrible things that they do nowadays. Nikki Durkot lives near Rose Court, where the body was found. And ironically, she knows the two victims who survived the home invasion. And that was my friend's actually grandma and her, I mean, grandpa and her baby brother. So that makes me even more angry. But Nikki has no idea about the third man found dead steps from her front door. As for the suspects in the case, local police warned Baltimore County police to be on the lookout for a silver Scion vehicle thought to be headed to the Essex area. Sure enough, the car was spotted, but the driver refused to pull over, initiating a pursuit, which ended seen here in this parking lot around one o'clock Friday afternoon. A female driver and male passenger were arrested. I'm very happy that they were arrested, you know, because they, again, they did these horrible crimes, you know, to the elderly, especially, you know, it's awful. You know, I'm definitely hope that they get what they deserve. During the pursuit, police say a number of items were thrown from the vehicle, including ammunition and two long guns. Charges against the suspects in this case have yet to be released. Now, police have also yet to re release the names of those suspects or the man found dead. Uh, now, as for the grandfather and grandson, uh, they are being treated for their injuries and are expected to survive. Live in the studio, Robert Boyd, 13 News Now. New information just in about a man found dead in Portsmouth. Police have identified the man as 57-year-old Jerry Johnson. He was found dead at the Exxon on London Street this morning. Police are investigating but haven't said anything about the circumstances surrounding the death or whether it's considered suspicious. A man is shot while standing at a bus stop in Hampton. Now, we brought you this breaking news earlier. It happened around 1.30 this afternoon on Michigan Drive. Police say the victim told them he was standing at the bus stop when someone fired off several shots. The victim is expected to survive, and police are trying to figure out if he was the intended target. Right now, they don't have any suspect information. Three men are under arrest in connection with a shooting inside a Harris Teeter in Virginia Beach. A store employee was shot during the robbery attempt earlier this week on Farrell Parkway. The employee is expected to survive his injuries. A store spokesperson tells us effective immediately, the store will only be open from 6 a.m. until 11 o'clock at night. It was open 24 hours. Well, that was the reaction today in Chicago. A jury found a police officer guilty of second degree murder in the shooting death of a black teenager. Defense attorneys say the officer was afraid for his life, but prosecutors say there was another officer with a taser just a few seconds away. ABC's Linda Lopez has today's developments. After less than eight hours of deliberations, a Chicago jury convicting Officer Jason Van Dyke. We, the jury, find the defendant, Jason Van Dyke, guilty of second-degree murder. 
Van Dyke sitting stone-faced as he listened to the verdict. But outside the courthouse, cheers erupting from demonstrators. This time we finally got justice. The jury also finding Van Dyke guilty of 16 counts of aggravated battery with a firearm. One count for each shot fired at 17-year-old Laquan McDonald. I feel that we gave a good verdict. We looked at all the evidence and we ruled on it accordingly. Officer Van Dyke had faced a charge of first degree murder. A conviction on second degree murder means the jury agreed that the accused truly believed the killing was justified, but that the belief wasn't reasonable. The verdict, the latest chapter in a story that's made headlines ever since a judge ordered the release of squad car video of the shooting. The video, played repeatedly at trial, shows Van Dyke opening fire. Van Dyke continues to shoot when McDonald is lying in the street. Laquan McDonald represents all of the victims that suffered what he suffered across the state line. Now, Van Dyke was found guilty of second-degree murder and aggravated battery, but was acquitted of official misconduct. This is the first time in nearly 50 years that a Chicago police officer has been convicted of murder for an on-duty death. Linda Lopez, ABC News, New York. New information tonight about the man accused of shooting seven law enforcement officers in Florence, South Carolina. One of them, a police sergeant, died, and today a judge denied bond for 74-year-old Frederick Hopkins. Hopkins is an Army veteran and was once awarded for his marksmanship. He was also awarded the Bronze Star for heroism while serving in the Vietnam War. Traffic stops that turn violent get a lot of national attention. A new app may help keep situations under control. It's called Police, and it's an add-on to the Shortcuts app that you can download onto the iPhone. Once the app is downloaded, all you have to do is say, hey, Siri, I'm getting pulled over, and your entire interaction will be recorded. We have found that video, whether it's taken by the individual or by the officer on his body camera, uh, really helps to preserve the moment and most of the time it makes both the driver and the police officer behave better. The feature will dim your phone and turn on do not disturb. It will also send a text with your exact location to someone you've pre-assigned. You have to have the iOS 12 system update. Protests on Capitol Hill did not stop the Senate from voting to advance Judge Brett Kavanaugh's Supreme Court nomination. A final vote will come tomorrow, and the Senate vote today was 51 to 49. Democrats are insisting that this week's FBI investigation into sexual assault allegations against Kavanaugh is not complete. Kavanaugh's confirmation process is being called the most divisive confirmation vote for a Supreme Court nominee in U.S. history. If the Senate votes tomorrow, as they did today, it would be the narrowest margin for any justice in 130 years. Well, there have been a lot of questions about how exactly this process is working. And tonight, we had our Jason Puckett verify the steps it takes to confirm a Supreme Court justice. Okay, so we're in the midst of Judge Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation before the Senate. And if you've loosely been keeping up with this, you may have some questions like, what was the vote Friday morning? Why are they voting again Saturday? And what happens then? Well, let's break this down. We verified all these steps with multiple U.S. Congressional Research Service reports. So we've already gone through most of these steps. Remember, President Donald Trump nominated Judge Kavanaugh way back on July 9th. The Senate Judiciary Committee had a lengthy hearing, including testimony from Dr. Christine Ford last week. Then they voted him through the committee to the Senate floor. And Friday, senators voted 51 to 49 to start cloture. Now, that's basically a Senate rule that stops filibusters and forces them to take a vote on this within 30 hours. And that's where we are now. The Democrats and Republicans both get 15 of those 30 hours to debate, talk, ask questions and more, but then the vote has to happen. But Jason, you may ask, haven't some senators been undecided? What happens if there's a tie or if they don't get 51 votes? Well, there are three possible outcomes. One, at least 51 senators vote to confirm Kavanaugh and he's the newest associate justice on the Supreme Court. Two, if there's a tie, VP Mike Pence would cast the tiebreaker 
after confirming Kavanaugh. And three, if 51 senators vote to reject the nomination, that's it for Kavanaugh. President Trump would have to find a new nominee. Hopefully that clears up some of the confusion for you, but keep in mind, we're still hours away from that final vote. So in the meantime, if you have any other claims or questions you want us to look into, send us an email. With your Verify, I'm Jason Puckett. Back to you.